So you are installing an aftermarket amplifier. You probably know that you need to connect the negative terminal of the amplifier to a ground within your vehicle. But how do you know that that spot is in fact a good ground location? The number one wiring mistake that I see is people just make that connection without properly testing it and just hope for the best. Have you ever installed a system and just felt like it wasn't getting the performance that it should? A bad ground or power connection can be the cause. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how we can test a ground location before we install, and I'm going to show you how once this system is complete, we can test for possible issues throughout our power connections that may be robbing us of performance. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I'm Mark and here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio together. I do build log videos. I'm actually working on a build project right here right now. I do lesson videos and I do review videos all about car audio. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So on this project here, I actually already have everything installed, but let's go back a few steps. Let's say that you haven't installed your amplifiers yet. Let's go back to the point in the project where you're trying to determine where to mount your ground wire. So at this point in the project, you might be looking at different bolt locations, different locations that are hidden behind the panels, or you might even be considering making your own grounding location. We have a couple of different options here. How can we test and determine what is best for our ground? In order to do the testing, we're going to need a DMM, which is a digital multimeter. These are both DMMs. This is a tool that you should have if you plan on doing any sort of car audio installation. It's just really handy for all sorts of different tests. This one is my pick for more of a mid-range to professional range, but you can also get a much more cost-effective version. I'll put a link to a couple of the ones that I like down in the video description. I'm going to use this tool to test the resistance between the different ground points that we're looking at and the negative battery terminal. I'm going to start this process by disconnecting the negative battery terminal so that we're not testing a live circuit. Next, on the DMM, I'm going to set it to this mode right here for measuring resistance. This is resistance in ohms. Now there's two test leads that are plugged into the DMM, and obviously I need to connect one all the way up here at the battery, and I need to connect the other one in the back at the different locations that we're testing. This is a shorter vehicle, but you could also get yourself a nice set of extension leads. But what's important to do is you want to actually measure the resistance of these wires themselves. So to do that, you just touch the two leads together. You can see I've got about 0.2 ohms. So whatever I actually get from my reading when I test in the vehicle, I want to subtract 0.2 ohms. That will give me the real measurement. All right, so I've got my common lead attached and going up with that extension to the front of the vehicle. And with the positive lead, we're going to start probing different locations. Actually, before we test that location, let's start with testing this cargo bolt location. I know that it's common that people think, hey, there's an easy bolt to use and they use a seat belt bolt or something like that. Let's test this out. So I've removed that bolt and it looks like some nice exposed bare metal in there. This should read pretty good, right? Let's see what we got. Oh man, we've actually got 1.4, 1.5 ohms. Now remember, we want our reading to be as small, as close to zero as possible. We know this location is kind of high, so I've kind of ruled it out, and I'm now probing this location here, which I ultimately did end up using, and we can see that we have 0.3 ohms. Don't forget that the leads are about 0.2, so this is really only about a 0.1 ohm resistance up to the negative battery connection. So in my case, ultimately, I determined that was the best location because it had such a low resistance after probing multiple different areas. So you have done the resistance test, but you're not done quite yet. The next test that I'm going to show you guys is actually something that very few people do. Even with identifying the best location to put our ground, we might turn on our system for the first time and still feel like we're missing some power. If you think about it, we all know that for a large, powerful amplifier, you need a large power wire and a large ground wire. We all know that if we used a small wire like this, the wire wouldn't be able to successfully pass enough current to the amplifier without limiting the performance of the system. But with that said, if we do the previous test, we still have a small amount of resistance, but obviously this wire would limit the performance of our system, so how could we still test limiting connection issues? Well, we need to test what is called the voltage drop. I'm going to show you exactly how to measure voltage drop, but real quick, a thank you to our show sponsor, New Concepts. This is the New Concepts Colossus Flex Amplifier Install Kit. Designed for the installation of large, high current audio systems, this amp kit includes oxygen-free cable. Included is plenty of power wire for both the positive and ground, speaker wire, 
RCA wires, a fuse block, a remote turn-on lead, and several other connection accessories. The kit is available in several different options, a 4-gauge version, a 0-gauge version, and even a 4-gauge 4-channel amplifier version. To learn more about this kit, check out the link to new concepts down in the video description. Let's get back into it. In order to test the voltage drop of our system, we need to have everything connected and installed, and we need the amplifier to actually be under load. Now we want that load to be consistent, so rather than playing music, we're going to play a test tone. I'm using a 40 hertz sine wave. If I turn it up, it sounds like this. Now that obviously is loud, so for the sake of filming, I'm going to go into a voiceover, but just understand that in the meantime, I'm always playing that test tone. To do this test, I'm going to put the DMM into a volts DC mode. With the test tone playing, I'm first going to measure the DC voltage between the battery terminals. Freeze that frame real quick so my reading was varying between 14.39 and 14.37 volts. I write down this recording because we're going to need it later. Now at the back of the vehicle, I'm measuring the voltage across the amplifier terminals. In here, I get about 14.32 volts. This is telling me the voltage that remains for the amplifier to use after all of the losses in voltage drop. So I record this value and then I do a little math equation. I do 14.37 minus 14.32. After taking these measurements, I found that I only have 0.05, which is 1 20th of a volt of voltage drop. This is actually a very, very small voltage drop and a sign of a good system. I'm not surprised because we used really high quality wire within this system. Everything is good to go. Again, it was only 0.05 or 1 20th of a volt. When we would want to be concerned is if it was a half volt or 0.5 volts or larger, that would be an issue. So in other words, if we take our initial battery reading of 14.37, subtract half a volt, if it was any lower than 13.87 volts, we would want to be concerned Concerned. So what if you do have more than half a volt of voltage drop? What do you need to do to determine what the issue is? Well, to test it, we could take voltage drop measurements at different points in our system. What a lot of people don't know is when you measure voltage, you don't necessarily have to put one lead on the ground and one lead on the positive. You can literally do this between two different locations that have the same polarity. So I could connect one lead of my DMM here and another lead here, and I would be verifying the voltage drop between this location and this location. So let's say there was an issue with the connection from the wire to this fuse block here, or if there was some sort of issue between the fuse and the fuse block itself, I would be able to identify that voltage drop within this location by measuring. So once you did the voltage drop test and proved that from here to here is good to go, you could now do a test from here to the positive terminal of the amplifier. This would tell you that, hey, maybe my power lead going up to the battery is undersized and a little bit too small. Maybe I need to upgrade that. You can test at every point along the circuit, so I could also test from here the ground connection on the amplifier through my distribution block and then put the other terminal on that ground that we made earlier, that way I would know if I was losing any voltage between there. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you're of course always gonna have some voltage drop because there is resistance in the wires and the different connections, but you don't want it to be over 0.5 volts. So by using this test, it's a great way to identify the weak points of your system and what you need to potentially upgrade or what you need to fix if a problem arises. So now you know how to perform those tests, but how do we plan all of our wiring for a build? Also, what are the major electrical system components that we need to upgrade for a car audio system? Check out these two videos here on screen to learn more. I make new videos like this one all the time, so if you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks to New Concepts, Anthony, Bernard, John, Brian, Thomas, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Don't forget to design, build, and install.